the incredible green of the of the of the surrounding countryside. It's just amazing, isn't it, at the moment? It just about glares at you in its in its greenness, and it's just a privilege for us to to be here with you this morning. Um, I noticed. It looks a little bit different to last time I, hit, well, I was here and uh, maybe showing how long it has been since I've been here. But yeah, I, l I like the way your, your pews are, are positioned and it, there's a, a feeling of closeness in your, um, in your congregation, which is really nice to see. Children, and I, um, I noticed on, on, on the little program that we had that, that your story has been crossed off. And, and I really don't want that to be the case. And so while the deacons are handing out the brochures, that, the, the little handouts for the, uh, for the older people, I want you to come down the front because I need a hand doing something. Would you mind? I've got something in here that whenever I go to my mum and dad's house, they usually have it on the table. If you'd like to just sit in a big circle for me. And um, my, my parents reckon that by having these, it, it avoids Alzheimer's. And does anyone know, do you know what it might be that's in here? It's not an animal. You don't know? Sometimes they have lots and lots of pieces to them. And you've got to put them all together. Yeah! A jigsaw puzzle. And um, our family loves doing jigsaw puzzles. Um, my sister did a 5,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. It took her a whole year. And she had it spread out on the lounge room floor and every time she went past she'd try and put a few pieces together. This one's not quite that big. Although it is pretty big, isn't it? And so I've got a number of pieces here, and I want you each to take some. There you go. What are the most important pieces? The corners. Go for the corners first. There you go. So you'll need a big, because it makes quite a big puzzle. Give some to, over there too. There you go. There you now what else do you need to look at when you're doing a jigsaw puzzle? You need to look at the master plan too, don't you? There it is. There. Okay. So you put that together. Sometimes in our family, uh, one of the members, and I won't say who it is, um, they will surreptitiously sneak off with one piece and, and hide it somewhere until the jigsaws approach completion that minus that one piece. And then they'll come up and put that finishing piece in. But don't you hate it? Don't you hate it, folks, when, when you're... Um, when you put that jigsaw together and one piece is missing? Ah. Oh. And you know, sometimes in church, well, sometimes as, as, as people we operate as that one piece and we think, I'm pretty complete like I am. I mean, there's a, there's a picture here. There's, uh, you know, there's almost a mouse there. And, and so I'm pretty complete the way I am. And, and we forget about the rest of the community that we're part of. And this morning, I want us to focus on, on us all being part of, of, of that community of God. That's why, we're, that's why we're here in church, because we're part of community. There's, um, there's no such thing as, as a solitary Christian. In fact, that's an oxymoron. Solitariness doesn't come with, with, with being a Christian. As Christians, we're here to, 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 to be together. As a, as, as a unit, you can say, oh, the puzzle's coming together, children. Here's a very important piece for you. There you go. It's big, I tell you, it's big. That's it. Oh, look, they're joining them together. While you're looking at that, uh, at that little handout, <coughs> focus on that front page. And in the middle there of that front page, you'll, you'll notice... A lovely little calligraphy by Timothy Botts is the, uh, is the calligrapher. I ha we have a few books of his and um, he, he just does some wonderful work. What do you pick out? What, what, what do you notice in that calligraphy? That they will be one. Anyone know where that comes from? 
Yeah, John 17, um, 20 and 21, I think it is. Anything else about it that you, that you notice? Every letter is different. I mean, even the letters that are the, that are the same in terms of the E um, are done differently, aren't they? So what's he trying to say by that? Unity in, in, in difference in, in, in un, each of us is unique, aren't we? There's a uniqueness to, to, to every individual, yeah. We're just going home in the car the other day and, and my daughter s said to me, just snowflakes, you know, just incredible to think that no two snowflake is the same. And yet here we are as, 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 as unique individuals. No, t no, I mean, snowflakes, you know, just tiny, but here we are so, so different to each other as, uh, as humans. And yet there's that togetherness that's there as well. And, uh, and so to bring that diversity um, into, a, into a sense of unity is, um, is so important. The bottom statement, all for one and one for all, where's, where's that come from? <laughs> Three Musketeers, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but I thought that statement, you know, really says it as well. The, the unity of community that we can have. The colour, the colour red, what's that remind you of? The blood, the blood of Jesus. It's the it's sacrifice of Jesus that provides us with that unity of community. And today, I want us to focus on some passages of scripture that really um, bring out quite distinctly and clearly from one little book in the, in the New Testament, this unity of community that, uh, that we can have together. Just, ha! Did you notice that? Whenever the, there's the finishing touch, you know, it's always the, the pat, isn't it? The pat of the, I heard that, and look at it, it's beautiful. Thank you, children. You can go back to your seats and just remember, you'll like that jigsaw puzzle. You're a piece, an important piece, that's part of, a, of the whole picture. Thank you so much. <clears throat> the first community, where was it? The first community. In scripture, where was that first community? Garden of Eden was, was one comment. I would hazard to say that even before then there was a community and, it was, and, and, it's, and it's stated right in that first chapter of Genesis. If you just come back quickly with me, Genesis chapter 1 and verses 26 to 28. If you're there with me, it says, Then God said, Let us make human beings or man in... In whose image? Our, what's our suggest? It, it's more than one, isn't it? There's, there's, yes, in our image, God's image, to be like ourselves. And uh, it's, um, if you read on, yeah, you'll see more of that. Here, here is God saying, let us make man, uh, the King James Version, uh, which, which is both male and female, it goes on to say. Let us make that entity in our image. And, and, and so this... this, this um, we, I don't want to go the, the route of plurality of God, but this, this um, three persons of the Godhead is being suggested here in this verse. There's a... Um, the early Christians had a, a, had a word that they used for, for the Trinity. And the word that they used was perichoresis. Now, you might say, well, I can't make sense of that. But if you break it down, you can. Because per peri means perimeter. What's the perimeter of something? The boundary, yeah. The, the, the around distance. Okay, so peri means around. Choresis, choreography. What's choreography? Coordination. Coordination, dance, yeah, yeah. And so here's this, this, this word for, for, for the, the Trinity being um, a, 
a dance around. And, and I mean, you, you might wonder as to, to why they'd say that, but, but here's this incredible unity of community with the, with the three in one in this really tight circle of closeness. The, the intimacy of, of, of this, this wonderful community that, that God himself had. And, and, and he's, he's, inviting, he's inviting man into, into that, that sort of community, that intimacy of community. And uh, unfortunately, as you, as you know from the Genesis account, that, that community was, was spoiled and individuality came to the fore. And you notice when, when, when Cain sinned, he, he went out on his own um, to his own place. Um, and, and so the, the incredible breakdown of, of community took place. All right, come with me to one of my favourite little books of the New Testament. And it's the book of Ephesians. And, and you'll have that outlined in your... Um, in your little program, in, in your little booklet here. I want to share it with you, a number of passages from the, from the little letter to the Ephesians, in a different sort of way this morning. And I, I want you to allow the, the Holy Spirit to, to guide your thoughts as, as, as I share these expressions with you. And, and why I've given you the little booklet is I want you to write down the, the, the thoughts that... that you're being impressed with, so that you've got it as a keepsake. And Ephesians 1 starts off with, with a little passage that really goes back to first things. But before we go there, if, if we're wanting the Holy Spirit to prompt us, we really need that Holy Spirit's recognition of that Holy Spirit's presence, don't we? Let's just pause in prayer, shall we? Father God, we invite you to guide our thoughts uh, and intents of our heart this morning as we, as we study your word together. Just invite you to impress on each of us what we need to be impressed with. Something that will go down deep to our hearts so that uh, if there's something that needs changing in our lives that you'll, you'll, you'll be directing that through the messages that you have for us from your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to endeavour to, to share the, some of these passages with you from memory and I need your help. Um, there's, there's one part, of, uh, there's one part that, that occurs a number of times and, and when I go like that, when I, when I point up to the right, I, I just invite you to share that with me. And it, it goes like this, because we are united with Christ. Now that's not too hard, is it? Are you ready? Because we are united with Christ. That's it, okay. <coughs> Ephesians, the, the, the first little section there, desire of God's heart, is the passage of Ephesians 1, verses 3 through to, I think it's 8. And it goes like this. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me just stop there. All praise. How much praise? All praise. All praise goes to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it does us good to come to worship, to praise him. Um, by praising God, it steps us outside of, of ourselves, our own, our own problems, and, and, and it it hones us in on the God of the universe who, who, who loves each one of us. There's a, there's a psalm, Psalm 34, that says, I'll praise the Lord at all times. I'll constantly speak his praises. I'll boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. And so as we come into a place of worship like this and we, and we sing out our praises to God, then he lifts us up above the problems that, 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 we're, that we're facing. And, and the incredible positivity of that 
has its influence in our life. So, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Oh, someone was awake. Good. <laughs> Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us near to himself through Jesus Christ. Listen to this. This is something he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. Wow. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has, he has poured out on us who, um, who, who have, have been brought near to him. <laughs> There's only one person who's doing this. <laughs> Come on, you've got to stay awake. Okay. Um, where does it go there? Um, he is so rich. There we go. He is so rich in kindness and grace. He's so rich in kindness and grace that he... Um, that he purchased our freedom. There you go. That he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Whew. Incredible, isn't it? Forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. That's our God. And, and, and the incredible richness of that, of that grace of God to, to each other. That's talking about the Father. Now, often we, we sort of picture the Father as being that distant one, but he is the Father who, who is intimately involved in the, in the plan of salvation for each of us. And he and the Son... And, and the Holy Spirit are all intimately involved in, in yours and my salvation. Write down what really struck you in that passage, and you might want to refer to it on there on page two at the first section. There's more. Um, you, you write while I talk. Chapter 2 of Ephesians starts off by, by talking about what's happened to the human race and the, that we're all in it together. Sin has, sin has had its impact on each one of us, hasn't it? I, um, none of us is above the other person in terms of, in, in, in terms of where we stand before God. Paul says in Romans, you know, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. My, um, brought home to me re this, just last week, um, or just this week, um, my wife was driving back from Rotorua on Sabbath afternoon. I was down on, on, in the South Island last weekend. And, uh, and on her way back, she was nearly home and, um, and she saw those lights coming up behind her. You ever seen those lights, you know, the blue and red ones? And she thought it must have been for them for another car, and so she just sort of kept going. But no, as fate would have it, it was for her. <laughs> and so she pulled over, and, and she received a, a little ticket for going a little bit too fast. Well, when she told me about it on, on Sunday, um, 
as we were driving back from the airport, I was almost tempted, you know, to, to say something about, you've got to be careful about your driving and keep your eyes open, you know. And, but I, I bit my tongue, which is quite unusual for me, and, and, uh, and, and didn't say a word. The very next day, Monday, went to pick up my, um, um, one of the secretaries from dropping her car at the, at the, at the workshop, mechanics, and we're driving back and I'm talking away and what would you know but here's a blue and red light. <laughs> and the same fate happened to me. <laughs> exactly the same fine. And, and, and it just really struck home to me, you know, hey, we're all in this together, you know. <laughs> she was going 1K faster than me. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we, all, we are we're all sinners, aren't we? Saved by grace. Here's the next passage, chapter 2, verses 4 to 10. But God is so rich in his grace, in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead in our sins, he gave us life when he raised up Christ from the dead. In brackets it says, for it's only by God's grace that you've been saved. And then it goes on. For he raised us up along with Christ and he seated us with him in the heavenly realms. You ready? Because we are united with Christ. What's next? So God, so God can point to us as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us, as shown in all that he's done for us, who are united with, united with Christ. Um, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation's not a reward for the good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it. And listen to this one. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Jesus Christ so that we can do the good things he planned for us from long ago. Isn't that a beautiful passage? Write down your thoughts that, that have struck you what the Holy Spirit's impressed on you from that passage. Keep writing while I'm talking. Where, where did we get it in our heads that, 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 that we could do anything towards our salvation? And yet, so often, we're, we're thinking, oh, you know, I, I, if, if I do this, maybe that will, that, that will help. Maybe I will put me in the good books with God. What the scripture's saying is we're already in the good books. He's given us his salvation. It's like um, I usually get my air tickets on, on the internet um, these days. But just suppose, just suppose I, I, I've done it for the first time and I don't, I'm not really sure whether that will give me the, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've gone through the whole process and the and, uh, whole transaction. I mean, there's no cash that's exchanged hands here. You know, it's just all, all credit card and, 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 and just all... Internet and and then I, 
I get this printed off, this, this little, what's supposedly a ticket, but I go to the ticket counter at the airport and I don't really believe that this is actually my pass to get on the aeroplane. And, and so I go up to the, the lady there and I say, look, um, if, I, if, I give you, if I give you this money, will you let me on the, the aeroplane? And she says, uh, have you got a ticket? And I said, oh, well, I've got this. And she said, well, don't be silly. That's your pass. Get on board. Or, um, you know, I might think, boy, you know, I haven't got much money. Maybe if I, maybe if I give my jacket away to the, to the person over there who's looking pretty cold, you know, maybe that will put me in the good books enough to... You've got your ticket, haven't you? I've got my ticket to get on that aeroplane. And, and you know, grace is that incredible gift of eternal life. You're seated already in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Let it sink in. Let it sink in that my ticket's assured. You know, it's there in my hand. And, uh, and the life I live is a reflection of the grace that God has has, has, has granted me. If you go to chapter, chapter 3 of Ephesians, go, turn there with me if you wouldn't mind. I haven't, I haven't um, written a passage there on your, on your pages. But if you look at chapter 3, oh, no, sorry, the end of chapter 2. Mine has the heading, Oneness and Peace in Christ. Oneness and peace in Christ. Hence the, the title, Unity in Community. And in, in, in those verses there from 11 onwards, you'll see Paul, through the Spirit, talking about this incredible unity that each of us has. Because why? Because we're united in Christ. And... Um, it's just amazing to see this, and, and for the early Christians, it must have been an incredible hurdle to get over to, to, to have this amalgamation of both Jew and Gentile. Um, you know, never the twain shall meet. And yet here, they're all one because they're united in Christ. And, and, and so here Paul is... Is, is is sharing this 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 incredible oneness and and endeavoring to to get them over the hurdle of of segregation to to, to having this uni unity and towards the end of chapter two he talks about a temple a temple of the Lord and he says each one of us are pieces like that jigsaw puzzle each one of us are pieces of that temple. Now we go to that 1 Corinthians 6, is it, where it talks about, don't you know that your body is the temple of, of God? Well, here Paul is talking about, don't you know that each one of us is part of that temple of God and that, and that we're all part of this, this community temple with, with Jesus at, as that chief cornerstone. And just a beautiful passage of scripture. All right, we're going to go to um, chapter 4. We're skipping over chapter 3 because I want to come back to it. And there's a beautiful passage there that I do want to share with you. But how to live out our desire in community is chapter 4 of Ephesians. And I think it's about verses 1 to 6. And if you're, if you're following on your little page here, it's to the left of, of on page three. <clears throat> Just listen intently and, and maybe there's no, there's, you don't have to re respond to because we're united in Christ here. But recognise that that's the key to why we do what we do as Christians, okay? So shut your eyes if, 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 if it helps you to focus. Therefore I, Paul, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called 
by God. Always, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Listen to this. Making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for the future. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is over all and in all and living through all. Write down the thoughts that have struck you from that passage. While we're there, let's go to the next passage which follows a similar vein and it's Ephesians 5, verses 15 through to 20, I think it is. That goes like this. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil times. Um... Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be, don't, don't, um, be drunk with wine, for that will only ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the, what? With the Holy Spirit. What will that make you do? singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs amongst yourselves and, and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Beautiful passage, isn't it? Write down what, what really strikes you from that passage. I love the, the thoughts that it shares about um, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making music to the Lord in your hearts. Um, does us good to, in coming and worshipping, to, to sing those, those, those songs to the Lord, doesn't it? And sometimes I suspect we sing about God rather than singing to God and yet God so much loves to hear us singing our praise and, and, and our worship to him. It just must, must make his heart feel so, so warm to, 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 to see and to hear those expressions of praise to him. Reminds me of that song, In My Heart There Rings a Melody of Heavenly Harmony. Yeah. Okay. One more passage. I want you to close your eyes for this passage. And it's from Ephesians chapter 3, 
verses um, 14 to 21. Beautiful passage of scripture. And Paul says here, he says, for this reason, he's been talking about this incredible unity that, that Christ has achieved for us with, with what he's done for us on Calvary. And he says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom his whole, whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power in your inner being. Strengthen you with power by his spirit in your inner being. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of, of all the fullness of God. Now to him is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful passage? I bet there's some thoughts that have struck you from that. Write them down. Maybe there's some challenges that God has for you from these passages that you, you might want to just make a note of. Here's one thing that I want to implement from, 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 from what God has been telling me this morning. You know, we can look at these passages and, and we can think, boy, you know, how do I do that? How do I, how do I um, be that person of peace? How do, I, how do I have that humility and kindness and generosity of spirit? You know, is it a case of me just trying that bit harder and, and, and putting my mind to it? And, uh, and, and, you, and you try that bit harder and, and, you, and you, still, you still make the mistake. You still lose your cool. You still act um, thoughtlessly in a situation. And I, I suspect, and, and I think this... What I'm sharing, about to share with you now, I think, is the heart of our whole Christian journey, because it's not about our trying, but it's a, it's a, it's about our being in God's presence, and allowing His presence to influence my life. And I, th I think, I think of God as being like that magnet. And and God is just, he, he's, he's just wanting to attract me as that magnet towards himself. And, and so, and he's wanting that intimacy of community, of unity of community, with me being drawn in close to my God. And as I'm being drawn in to, towards God like this, what happens? What happens to that piece of steel there? It becomes magnetised, doesn't it? And so then someone else comes along and they can be attracted towards God as well. And, 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 and through the, the character of God that he's able to express in your life and my life while we're being drawn close to him, it can be a, a source of attraction for others. Is it about me? Absolutely not. Because as soon as you start focusing on me and get away from God, we lose that source of attraction. And what, that, what they, these passages are saying to me is that 
the Holy Spirit, God, God through the Holy Spirit just so much wants to, 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 to have that intimacy of, of, of connection. And, and as I allow the Holy Spirit to, 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 to live in my heart and life, then through the Holy Spirit and through that connection with God, um, I can be that, that source of, a, of attraction to others. Know God. The, the um, Ephesians 2 says, if you know God, you know hope. Know God, no hope. But know God and you know hope and love and peace and the, all the fruits of the Spirit that can, can become yours and mine as we, as, as we have that holy connection with, with God. This is what he wants to do with us, friends. This, he want, this is what he so much wants for each one of us. Because as we have that intimacy of connection, we have all the fruits of the Spirit. We have the joy, the peace, the, the, the delight of what life was meant to be in him. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to invite us to do something quite different now. It's something we normally do, you, you normally do on a retreat. And, and I'm going to invite us all to stand up and we, in, a, in a big circle. And rather than doing the last hymn together, I want us to, 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 to just do this together in a big circle. And we'll go right around the outside of the pews. And uh, my sister here, you're going to be at the front with me. Do you mind? How do I unblock that? Um, to do this, you'll need to stand, friends. Yeah. So c come in front of those back pews, uh, friends. There, that's it. And um, go to the sides. That's the way. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And the, yeah, let's hold hands. Oh yeah, come and join in. So here we have demonstrated the unity of community that, that, that is being spoken of here in Ephesians. And this is what God wants for us as, as, as a church, as a church family. Let's forget about the individuality, the... Um, trying to make my own point and, 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 and thinking that my point of view is the most important. Let's, uh, let's focus on that unity of commu community and allow ourselves to be bound together, bound together. Ephesians says in, in peace. And uh, yeah, So let's sing that song, Bind Us Together, Lord. You know, you know it? I'm sure you do. Um, bind the Lord. And us chords. Hang on, hang on. We'll start again. Go up a key. Woo, woo, woo. Bind us together, okay? Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with chords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with peace. <laughs> there is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body. That is why I sing. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Father God, oh, you've heard our, 
song of praise to you. You've heard the desire of each of our hearts this morning. Thank you so much for your word. And uh, thank you for how it demonstrates the incredible love that you have for each one of us. We each want to be drawn towards you, Lord, in our daily lives. If there's things that you're wanting to direct us to do in order to, 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 um, to come in closer to you, we invite you to um, yeah, just um, keep, keep um, nudging us, keep nudging us to do those things. Um, and, and help us each as we, as we are part of this community to allow the, the, the reflection of your character to be there in each of our lives so that others, others may be drawn towards you and, and they'll be saying, I, I want what you have. And we'll be able to say, well, I have God in my life. And they might be drawn to you too, Lord. So bless us each as a community here in Monterey, in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. God bless, friends. <laughs>